We're joined by former Lions quarterback Eric Kramer. Paul Catalina, Eric Kramer, David Smoke on 365 Sports in Phoenix. We were just reminiscing about the team you were a part of. Beat Dallas, I think, in the playoffs, and then Washington in the championship got you. Last time the Lions snipped. You're the only Lions quarterback in like 60-something years to win a playoff game. Isn't that sad? <laughs> yeah, well, no, it is. And it also the I don't last think time that's going to last not for much you longer. Not no. for you. No, no, no. But I'm thinking like <laughs> next year the Lions break that streak finally. Yeah, Washington mm-hmm. hasn't done anything since then either. Really, no. they've had a couple of teams, but nothing like that. Man, I, I got to tell you, your story is unbelievable. Yeah, your story. So let's start. If it weren't real, it would be. No, yeah, you <laughs> that you're here and telling the story. It's about depression. It's about adversity. I, if you don't, you, you tried to kill yourself. I did. I did. And that's the one great, that's the, my favorite failure yeah. was that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to describe that. That is a great way to describe that. And, and, and so, you know, I think in life, heck, we've all been through, you know, if, if you live past 25, 30, 35, you're going to encounter some obstacles in life, right, even as a kid. But, um all good stories involve getting over something. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that something is bigger than other somethings. And I think what I've learned is that there's a whole willing support system around me that at times I didn't know was there. And now that I do, and now that I have perspective of someone who has shot themselves and then am still here to tell the story, um, I'm, I couldn't be more grateful that every day my feet hit the floor, there's something new to live for. What was the thing when you when you came out of it Yeah, and, and were in recovery and you, you realized, okay, I'm still here, that made you want to stay? Um, I, I, quite honestly, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and it, I wish it – I shouldn't say this. My experience was that – there wasn't like a day and, oh, I'm back. Mm-hmm. It, it happens over time. There's two or three or four years in there that I'm a little fuzzy on anything that happened. Mm-hmm. And um, you just, in fact, there was, <laughs> there was a time when I was at a brain trauma recovery clinic, not knowing why I was actually there. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> my... Now girlfriend who wasn't then or my sister or my aunt, and they, I'm like, why am I here? And, and they're like, Eric, the doctors have told you this. I go, no, they're not. Didn't you have a doctor <laughs> one time you went back for a follow-up to reset something and he kind of was staring at you blankly because yeah. he didn't... He never thought he would see you again. Yeah, right. I think I, it was to, to repair part of what had happened with the skull. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it, it, as part of the surgery that night, um, this is back in 2015, and um, as they're uh, beginning to sort of pull everything back, my brain started to swell. Mm. So they had to leave it open. And, and uh, it was, they had to come back a couple days later and actually uh, put what is now not a real skull in there. And obviously, months and months and many months later, um, I'm in the doctor's office, and he's asking me a couple questions, and I'm answering him, and I look up, and I see his, I said, his jaw was like on the floor. I'm like, did I say something (laughs) wrong? He goes, no, 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 I'm sorry. I, I just, you know... People like you don't come back. Yeah. And uh, so, welcome. <laughs> to tell the story, and there's reasons people get depressed. And you yeah. can have everything you want in life. And you were depressed in a way even when you were playing as a yeah. quarterback with the Lions and lost your job because you got hurt yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But your son died of an overdose, yep. heroin. And you started seeing other things fracture around your family and all mm-hmm. that. I mean, People can learn from, I mean, you can tell the ultimate story of depression yeah. and the survival of it. Yeah, well, the, the thing about depression or anxiety or anything that 
anything that happens to kind of get you off kilter, it doesn't wait for a lull in your life. <laughs> and, uh, it, it <laughs> and so it happens in your everyday and you have to get through that. And it's not like you go stop by the therapist's office on your way to work that morning. Um, and so th- this is something you learn how to kind of forge your way through. And I remember it was actually with the Bears in 94. And here I am getting recruited to go there, get hurt early in the season, come back. And now I'm healthy to play a few weeks later, but not playing. Right. And not doing what I was hired to do. And so that was my first experience with, ah, I don't know if I can get out of bed today. And I remember my mom coming out, flying out and for a few days, and it was a big deal. And, um, you know, eventually uh, I got on some antidepressant medication and started, uh, you know, seeing someone professionally and just kind of slowly, slowly, and even more slowly inching my way back. And uh, there's no quick fix. You know, there's not some magic pill you can take and voila, here you are again. Uh, and so it's a series. Uh, and, and so it's, while depression and anxiety have not been a constant companion of mine, they do show up from time sure. to time. And certainly, as you had mentioned, uh, Griffin, who had a, a drug issue, uh, you know, that was identified uh, about 10th grade, middle of his 10th grade year. Um, and... By the time he was 18, you know, it, it resurfaced again, and he died of a heroin overdose. And that was probably hmm, the first, that was the deepest sadness in life I'd ever experienced. My mom and dad lost our sister at a very young age, and mm. I don't know until they passed away in 2015 if they ever recover. I'm not sure I you don't do. know you ever do. I'm not sure you I do. mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I, you've been through it yeah. as, as my sibling, and, and I don't know if they, and they're the two sweetest people you could ever want on this earth, but I don't, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, and there's an aftermath <laughs> to the people mm-hmm. who, who don't go. And so, uh, and then, you know, prior to Griffin passing away, my mom, uh, uh, earlier that year, was diagnosed, the day she was diagnosed, it was stage four uterine cancer. And uh, so then... She somehow survives a le- what should have been a lethal surgery, only to then eventually pass away after Griffin did uh, that next July. And uh, around that time, my dad uh, had some non-treated uh, acid reflux that developed into terminal esophageal cancer, which <sighs> itself was about a three or so year, you know, it wasn't an up and down march. It was a straight down mm-hmm. march, but gradual descent. And uh, so there came a time when, uh, you know, at, during all this time, I was, had a passing camp going for high school kids and was in broadcasting, and all of that came to a screeching halt. And, um, uh, you know, I went off on my own there for a while. And uh, it wasn't a long while, and and, and, uh, there was a a, a certain day where uh, I had a gun and and purchased one, and um, I I don't even remember all the facts of what happened that day. And uh, uh, all I know is that I did shoot myself, um, and apparently a friend of mine who I'd gone to high school with was uh, at L.A. County Sheriff's back then. And uh, I, I guess I texted him. Mm. And he called over to the Lost Hills Sheriff's Department, which was not down the street from where I was. And uh, I don't remember anything that happened, but apparently he called the room I was in and said, Eric, whatever you got in your hand, drop it. And he said he heard something hit the floor and he said there's somebody at your door right now so apparently I got up and opened the door and it was uh, I don't know who it was but I walked down into an ambulance I guess and off I went you had shot yourself yeah (laughs) 
If someone's watching and everybody has their moments, as you've mentioned, of depression, anxiety, whatever the words are, the phrases, what do they do? What do you suggest? Just call somebody? Sure. Call a friend, call family, call a, a, somebody that handles that? Yeah. Well, here's – so now, today, um, I have uh, X amount of people that I know I can share anything that's going on at any time with. Well, because I've got a, sure. a very well-known story. But at the same time, I suggest – because everybody walking this planet from one day to the next is going to have some issues that if you keep yourself isolated, in fact, you actually are the worst person to consult with. So there's going to be somebody else that's got a little bit more perspective than you do. And whoever that is in your life, whether it be a friend, a brother, a sister, a parent, whoever that person is, a professional therapist, uh, seek out someone else. And hopefully that's kind of the uh, a course of your day anyway. All right. Go ahead, Paul. No, no one walks through the world alone if you allow yourself not to, right? I mean, is that what you're kind of Paul. saying? It's like you, you, can, you can try to go it alone, but it's not, we're not meant to. We are not. And I think that's, you know, there's a program that I'm trying to get launched off the ground now for these last couple of years, uh, which we're going to call Mental Health Touchdown, uh, and start with kids. And start with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders in an after-school program. Hopefully by this coming August, and uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a curriculum in place, um, and uh, there's a, a woman and that's going to help launch it with me in schools, or probably an after-school program, and the tail end of elementary and just the beginning of middle school, and uh, you know, pro- probably pick one of each in, in the area that we both live. And uh, uh, start working with kids and kind of developing what they see around them in other people that they admire, characteristics they admire at age-appropriate levels. Football question. Yes, sir. 91, hell of a team, as you, we talked about. Washington yeah. beat you. Dallas was on the up. I mean, I think Aikman was even hurt that year in 91, and Burline might have been their quarterback. Did you see then what they were about to be? Oh, yeah. Could you... Because <laughs> they turned into a dynasty. They, they had that run. They did. And then the, the, so that was, right, the 91 season. The 92 season, we played them in a preseason game in London. And that team put on a facelift. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they were eight deep at every position. Uh-huh. And uh, it was, uh, you could see it then. That they already had something going on pretty good to begin with. Now they had an edge. And the, yeah. They, now, now the train was rolling down the hill. You wonder if free agency had not taken over. Right. Had they won four out of five or whatever. Uh, now, Patrick Mahomes, a picture of him on the wall. You have Brady just retired. You have Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and all these names. Yeah. And Jalen Hurts has done a great job this year. Quarterback today, your thoughts about the game, the quarterback position today? Well, I don't think it's, it's changed a whole lot. You know, it's, it's how well can you process what you see and then deliver to who needs the ball? How, can you move people around the field that need to be moved? There's usually typically one guy in his own defense that you need to move. You either need to keep him where he's at or you need to use the people around that are on your team to move him one direction or another. And th- that's the game that the guys you just mentioned all yeah. play. Yep. Absolutely, they do it. All right. I have two Barry Sanders questions for you. Yes. One, when you're quarterbacking with Barry Sanders and you hand him the ball. Best ticket and he in the goes, house. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you, did you have to sometimes go, oh, maybe I have to go help him out? Or you just kind of lay, lay back and like, I'm just going to watch <laughs> whatever's going on here. There was a great game we played in, uh, this is pre-Manning um, uh, in Indianapolis. And Rodney's playing quarterback. And he hands the ball to Barry going off to the right. He this is about on the 40-yard line or so going in, and he reverses field. Before he even gets past Rodney coming the other way, Rodney's got his hands up in the air. <laughs> wow. He knows. You could just see it happen. Yeah. No one's going to catch that There was guy. a playoff game against Dallas where he just was – it, oh, it, 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 it was like – He's a video game before there were video games. <laughs> yeah. And a phenomenal human being, so, too. Yeah. My, yeah. my other question about it is, if you mentioned that the quarterback is the same, offenses are a lot different. If you could move Barry Sanders around yeah. like they do now, 
what would we have been looking at? Wow. Well, he would have had to have been. So one thing he was not great at was running routes. Mm-hmm. And he, he really wasn't great with the ball not in his hands. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not sure what kind of route run. I don't think if you're getting at would he be today's Christian McCaffrey, no. Okay. Um, and he was literal. I don't even think he would have been as good as Emmett Smith in that offense. Because Emmett was able to kind of get a hard three or four yards. Yeah. And that wasn't Barry's game. Mm-hmm. Barry no. would rather lose one trying to get 40 than gain four. Yeah. No, you're right. And, and then Smith was pretty – he was deadly enough out of the backfield on the swing passes and all that. EKPass12.com is the website. Uh, we have Fort Hood is right in our backyard from our main location in Central Texas. Also, the U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company. And I know the servicemen and women and what they deal with on an everyday basis. Uh, we'll try to pass this along to them. Love it. Too. Eric, great Appreciate to see guys. you, man. Yep. Yeah. Eric Kramer, seen. former NFL. We are back 